Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. As you can see, the Devlin was a re-entry red with a micro gold flake in it. That was the last spray out I did. To now being a pearl white. And the reason being is because these paints are a little bit different. The custom paints are a little bit difficult to use uh, with certain colors. And the darker the color is, the more of the lighter color you have to spray out on top of that darker color in order to get the color you're looking for of the lighter color. And I'll kind of explain this. Like with this here being a pearl white, you're not going to spray a red primer or a dark primer. Uh, base on the bottom of this and then go ahead and spray your pearl over it. What's going to happen is it's going to be transparent and you're going to see that dark primer through the finished product. So what I've used is a gray primer and that helps with this not being transparent. So I sanded this thing all the way down to the primer Resprayed the primer in some of the bare, bare areas, you know, after feathering out those areas so it doesn't show a line or a mark or a circle or a ring or whatever. Feathering out those areas and then respraying this with the primer and then sanding the primer down with 800 grit sandpaper, wet sanding. That way it gets any like bumps, dirt, or anything that ended up being in the primer from not showing up when I put the color on this. So, what's nice about doing it that way is that if you have like a pimple or a, a a bump or something in your finish of the primer, sanding that out first, wet sanding it, making everything nice and smooth does two things. Gets rid of all the imperfections that are in the primer itself and also the sanding makes a, um, a base for the next layer of paint to grip into. Okay, when I mean grip into, that's the sanding scratches. So 800 grit sandpaper all over the whole thing. You're not going to go through. If you got three coats of primer on here, light coats of primer on here, you're not going to go through it right away if you're wet sanding if you dry sand yeah you might go through it pretty quick but wet sanding no especially if you just keep the movement going on so i got rid of whatever imperfections were in the primer and then hit it with the pearl white now this is being a little bit of a pain in the ass you know i'm used to using custom colors but custom colors as a solid color not as layers like i'm doing with this now when I did the uh, Eddie Van Halen, was it 40 or 51, 49 and a half guitar, those were used with solid colors. They weren't custom colors. And the problem with the custom colors is they're more translucent than a solid color is. They're more transparent. You can see through them a lot easier, which means you need to put more coats on it. So when I had the re-entry red over this, trying to put the pearl white on top of that, it took a lot of coats to cover that red to get the depth of the white that I was looking for that actually made it look like a pearl white, not something else. And that's where it is right now. It's at a solid pearl white. So I got the back wet sanded. And the nice thing about uh, using a gun or using an airbrush is you have flow control and you have air pressure control. Now, using a airbrush, let's see here. Using an airbrush somewhat like this is you got control over when you push down, you got your airflow and then you got your forward back as far as how much air, how much paint, how much paint to how much air. And you're able to control that. When you're using a spray can compared to a gun or an airbrush, you do not have that control. The only control that you have is backing away from the surface that you're painting. You want less paint to show up on the surface? Well, you back off a little bit, but that makes a lot of waste, especially in a spray can when, you know, these cans, these cans are not cheap. They're, they're kind of expensive. And Backing off creates more overspray, wasted paint, and you know, you gotta come up with a happy media of your distance and can be a consistent distance away from whatever surface you're painting in order for it not to look blotchy. If you're looking for a you know a more solid, darker color, when you're using these custom colors, you can go closer to the surface, but you risk runs and sagging of the finish as it's starting to dry. You have to work kind of quickly and still come up with a happy distance that's closer without looking blotchy. So it becomes a little bit of difficult. Now, years ago, 
when you want a, say, a pearl color or metallic color and stuff, you didn't buy a spray can of it. You had to mix it yourself. Now, this is a jar of crushed pearl. This is very expensive. And throughout the years, you can kind of see this is a crushed pearl. I don't know if I can get it in the light. Well, you can kind of see the flakes in the air now a little bit from, but this is crushed pearl. And like I said, this is a very, very expensive little jar here. And uh, you mix this with the paint. You didn't, yeah, you can see it floating around in the air now. This very, very fine crushed, uh, you mixed it with the paint, and this is what gave you a pearl effect. And you can almost do it to any color. Uh, actually, you could add it to any color. And depending on how much thinner you would put in there, like the reducer is what it's called, uh, you could thin out the paint to where uh, you get a nice mixture of the pearl and a nice mixture of the color, and it ends up looking like the what you're looking at right now. Now, yeah, I got the pearl. Pearl is kind of all over the place right now. So I'm learning a little something with these uh, custom colors. And so what I'm going to do is I already hit it with the white. I'm wet sanding it now, so I'm giving the next color something to bite into when I start spraying this. So I got two things that I got to go on right now. Wet sanding this thing and then striping it with the tape. Now the nice thing about doing it this way too is when you're striping it, you don't have to do a lot of cutting. All right, if this was the the re-entry red, I would have to do a lot of cutting as far as the tape goes in order to get my striping the way I want it, and then a lot of masking on top of that. Most of this will be masked off, leaving me just a striping area. This here is I can use my striping tape and just stripe off the areas that I don't want the re-entry red to cover, and without having to cover the whole thing with mask. So this works out a little bit better but the problem is, is I know how the re-entry red reacts over a silver, which I'm going to end up doing that again with this. Uh, and then being somewhat translucent, transparent, to where you can kind of see, you know, a little bit of what's going on underneath the paint. All right. And then peeling off the tape and hopefully not ending up with a real, real high tape line. That's the problem with you doing this. You end up with a real tall tape line. It, they are a little bit of hard to sand out. You still have a line there, and you still have an indentation. This, that's where the clear coat comes in to fill that. So you do like three coats of clear on top of it, sand it, wet sand it down again, and then you do another three coats of clear on top of that, sand it down again, and then another three coats, and then that'll fill in the void of where the tape line is and everything becomes nice and level and flat so you don't feel anything. It's kind of like what I did with the blue guitar, uh, the Mach 1, and it's exactly what I did with the um, Eddie Van Halen striped guitar as well, which was a lot easier to do because those were solid colors. Solid colors are able to spray on top of other solid colors without bleeding through, without showing or being transparent to where you could see the color underneath it. These custom colors are a lot different to work with. Now, I'm used to using an airbrush with custom colors because you don't really need a lot. And before you weren't able to get custom colors in cans. So that was a lot different years ago. So this right now, I've got the back pretty much wet sanded. It's pretty smooth. It's dulled out and then I just got to get this top wet sanded and get it to where it's going to be able to accept the next layers of paint that I'm going to put on this without being really heavy and real thick.